personally like to thank Impossible Pictures for being so kind to the cast this year and sending us all on holiday to Fuerteventura, which, if you don't know, it's just next to Lanzarote. Lovely this time of year. Okay, technically it's not really a holiday. We have to do some filming or something while we're out there, but hey, crack open the Factor 50. Sunbathing, here I come. Factor 50? Yeah. I've got pale skin. One of the sequences that we wanted to do on Fuerteventura was um, for episode four, which is the Mer Creature episode. Uh, so essentially, we wanted to go the other side of the anomaly into the future. It's going to be very difficult out there because we're filming on a petrified beach, which is literally a mixture of magma, lava, and sand, which is just kind of frozen in time. It's so cool, but it's really difficult to film on. But you know what? I don't care because we're doing the future. How cool is that? It's. Probably the maddest location I've ever been to. Um, we're surrounded by nothing. It's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, have a look. Welcome to the future. So this is uh, your caravan, the caravan of love, which is right on the edge of the cliff. Very safe. Oh, look at that. Um, tentacles uh, provided. <laughs> Aircon units. Look at that. It's a beauty. And get a friend. Waiting for you. Yeah. Already in there. Where are we going now? Good morning. We are going to set. So what we're doing, Andrew, is we're going to bring you out of the sea and we're going to shoot that down there. Your journey continues up down that path there. Cacophony of mer creatures screaming. Travelling to Fuerteventura was very funny because seeing a whole film crew on the move is like watching a big school trip. Well, it's not the Bentel Centre in Kingston, I'll give you that. <laughs> Welcome to my rock. Obviously working on this sort of terrain is really rough on everybody. Safety-wise, always a, a challenge. We had to make sure that Andrew Lee Potts was hooked up so he didn't fall off the, the ledge and also Hannah was down down below. Challenge for the actors who were hanging off ledges and um, being battered by the wind and the the uh, spray from the sea. But they, they it worked a treat for us because um, that end sequence uh, really uh, says something about the, the two characters and the relationship between the characters. I think it would be wonderful. Yeah, having the uh, stunt guys holding my legs and taking a lot of Hannah's weight in my arms, I kind of felt a little bit stretched and I've probably been in more comfortable situations, but no, it was absolutely awesome to even be given the opportunity to play such a dramatic scene in Primeval. Just a little bit more. Get up. Woo! Great for life. Yeah. Yeah, you get to play with bread for lunch. Yeah. Well done, baby. Well done, you. The canaries look extraordinary. I mean, they're perfect for being, you know, 20, 30 million years ago. But filming out there was good, except being continually soaked all the time before a take. But thankfully, they should dry off quickly there because it's sunny. Oh, it's so glamorous, isn't it? Oh, miserable. It's been a long day. Um, but a good day. So it's been a good bonding experience for Primeval. You know what? We do it because we do it. We do it because we were born to win, all of us. Yeah? There's not one loser on this set. When one of the episodes, there's a saber-toothed tiger, and it chases me all over our house. And uh, I wasn't sure how they were going to be able to, to achieve that, really, because I thought, how, well, how big a house do you need to be able to fit a saber-toothed tiger in it? But... I had a great day with, with Roger Tooley, who's um, the Steadicam operator on, on episodes one, three, and four. He's, he's so, I mean, fantastic at his job, but so enthusiastic in the way that he does it. And, and both of him were working so closely together for the whole day. Um, and that, that, that was one of the best days filming 
the Steadicam is, is basically very heavy, but you do get used to it, and um, we've been using it a lot every day. I think it puts the weight mainly on, on the legs. I've got very strong legs, and the rest of my body is really weak, but um, <laughs> it's good we're having a laugh, really. We've thrown Cutter round the house. Yeah. We've literally had him <laughs> bouncing off furniture. We've smashed him through doors. We've thrown him around every single room in this house. <laughs> and because we're not quite finished, we're about to throw him off the edge of there. talking about having somebody do it for me, but, you know, I don't like to do things like that. I prefer to do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's actually there to do the, the speaking bits for me. I say, I'm going to do the jumping bits for him. <laughs> There is a lot of pictures taken of the actors. There are a lot of All right. pictures. There is a lot of pictures. <laughs> When filming the Crime Evil, there's pictures taken of the actors. <laughs> when filming Crime Evil, there's pictures taken of the actors all day long. <laughs> Enough already. Don't you just hate the paparazzi? is that I make sure then that everything looks continuous because we shoot everything out of sequence but when the editor cuts it together it has to look continuous so for example people's hair might grow and you need to take a picture so that three weeks later when you come to finish off that scene if their hair has grown you can then compare it to the picture you just took for my block I probably would take um, Three, three hundred, maybe three hundred, something like that. Um, it depends. If it's a very complicated sequence, like a stunt, I take more pictures because you need to cover every element. Um, but once you've established a day and you know what somebody is dressed, how they dress, then you obviously don't need to retake that picture. You just compare your picture, so it can vary. But maybe three hundred. Obviously, actors get quite bored. They feel like we're the, you know, paparazzi. We're always photographing them. At the end of a sequence, it's like whole positions, and then um, costume will go in, makeup will go in, then I'll go in. So they stand there like that, looking terrified. So that's why you get some ridiculous photographs with people messing around, going like that, and doing their thing, because it is pretty boring um, to be photographed constantly. Connor V. Cutter at Pool. So probably one of the biggest challenges Cutter's had to face yet. Um, I'm going to back the underdog. It's going to be me. We all, we all know who that is, don't we? Oh, I missed the break. <laughs> what, what was that? Two stripes. Two stripes down in the first shot. Yeah. Well, yeah. It still hurts you, doesn't it? Oh. That's what's so funny, is it still hurts you. Yeah. Didn't get that one, did you? Always good. I was actually being kind to you that day. Oh, oh you think you're so clever like that. <laughs> you're so happy with yourself. <laughs> Your face is more of a picture than mine. See, pool, I, I played a lot when I was a kid and stuff like that, and I actually did a little bit of skateboarding, but I've played pool more often between then and now than, than I have skateboarding. Um, so it must have been very sweet for you, Andrew. When I saw a skateboard in the middle of the arc and immediately kind of jumped on it and tried to kind of do a 360 turn at the table and instead promptly fell in my ass. Ben Miller's quite good on a skateboard. No, he's not. He is. I wouldn't have that. He's a, he's a, he's a skateboarding man in a suit. It's a lie. <laughs> now, don't let me ever catch you doing that again. 